glad you're here. You're going to be really, I think you're going to be pretty stoked by the end of today's call that you joined today. I have some really cool stuff to share and show you. We're going to go through uh, some, just some happenings in real estate. I have a little roundup for you of the recent happenings. There's a lot going on. And we're also going to take a look at a new update of Zudelio. I am going to show you the new Cash Plus redesign page. It's really cool. I think you're going to love it. And we are going to end today's call and I'm going to show you how you can create your own chat GPT chat bot with no coding needed at all. I'm also going to show you the new Cash Plus Home Advisor GPT that we created here at Zudelio so you can play around with that and get all of your, your questions answered for the Cash Plus offer. So glad you are here. Uh, how, is, how is your December going? And where are you listening in from today? I'd love to hear from you. This is a time for us to be committed. And I believe those who are committed are going to last. Those that are just interested in real estate, the hobbyists, uh, they're, you know, it's, it's a tough market. They are not going to make it. So I know that you are different and I'm glad you're here. A lot to unpack. It is just the most interesting time in real estate, I believe. And I, I think I say that just time and time again. I thought I would start off today's call just going over some of NAR's 2023 predictions uh, because I showed you this last year about this time. NAR had came out last year and said, okay, for 2023, here are the predictions. And what they predicted is we'd have about 4.78 million home sales. They predicted that the median home price would increase by just 0.3%. They predicted rents were gonna rise by 5%. They predicted foreclosures would be at historic lows, less than a percent, and they predicted the 30-year fixed rate would settle at around 5.7. So as I'm kind of reading those off, and as you're looking at those numbers on the screen, you're probably thinking that they were wrong on a lot of aspects, and you'd be right. They were wrong. Let's see where they went wrong. Well, I know the year's not over yet, but I think we can call it for home sales. Existing home sales, we're going to end up right about 3.79 million units about. And so you can see they were way off on units. Uh, equity gains, so the median price has actually went up 6.8%. So they were wrong on that. Looks like rents didn't quite rise 5%. Now, I know all real estate is hyper-local, so your local market might be doing different than this. This is just on a national perspective. Rents are up 1.29% year over year. They were right on foreclosures. Foreclosures are still at a historically low level at less than a percent. And we know that that 30-year fixed rate is way above 5.7%. Now, I know the year's not over, but I don't think we're going to see it go from where we're at today, which is the low sevens, down to the 5.7% mark. So NAR was, they were wrong, right? And you've probably heard that, you know, I, I know that I'm, I'm a big fan of keeping current matters. And they always say the people that say they can predict what's going to happen are wrong. They don't know. And so I just think it's really interesting to kind of look at these numbers and think, wow, NAR was was pretty wrong. And it's, it's always funny because I have more predictions to share with you today of where we're headed. And so we'll see next year, how those turn out. All right, so we know that there has been some downward pressure on interest rates, thank goodness, which is causing some movement in the market. And there's talk that over the next year, the Fed is going to start cutting rates. And so obviously this is really good news for buyers. Rates are so high that it makes that affordability at that all time low. And we know that that causes just that freeze in the market. And so I'm really excited to see how this plays out. We can see though that the fixed rate is coming down and it looks like late last week, we settled at about 7.09% for that 30 year fix, which is wonderful news. Again, causing movement in our market. We can see week over week pur purchase applications are up ever so slightly. So they were up 2.8% week over week, which is great news. More buyers are getting out there and 
applying for mortgages. I think that also considering the seasonality of the time and space we're in, this to me suggests that there is definitely pent up demand and buyers going out, getting pre-approved near the holidays shows that probably next year is going to heat up and we're going to see this kind of icy market start to defrost and we're going to see more movement. So be ready, get yourself ready. I know that times around the holidays it often can be very busy but maybe not so busy with actual showings and appointments and that sort of thing so use this time wisely and I have a great way you can do that I'm going to show you at the end of the call how you can create your own chat GPT they're calling them GPTs and I think take advantage of this time where you may be a little bit slower all right there have been home equity changes across the nation. CoreLogic came out with their quarter three 2023 home equity insights report. And so I just kind of wanted to show you where we stand. We can see that across the U.S., most states have seen an increase in equity. And so the top three states were Hawaii at $64,000 of an increase in home equity, Number two was California at 51,000. Massachusetts was number three at 45,000. So those states took the cake. Uh, there were some, there were some losers in home equity. So Texas was the number one state that lost equity and on average $9,000. New York on average $8,000 and Utah on average $100. Here were some other insights extracted from CoreLogic's home equity report. 63% of homes in the U.S. have a mortgage. Well, that was kind of interesting. There was an increase from quarter two, 2022, to, or I'm sorry, from quarter three, 2022 to quarter three, 2023 of $1.1 trillion in equity growth. So quite a big chunk of equity growth, which is quite amazing. Uh, the average homeowner gained $20,000 in equity. That represents a total of 6.8% in equity growth. And I thought this was kind of interesting, too, because CoreLogic reports on the homes that are underwater and very, very low amount of homes with negative equity. And they predict or they said that that is at 2%. So 2% of homes with mortgages are negative equity, which is extremely low. So we know that homeowners are in a good position. We know that there haven't been a lot of the refis and the cash out refis over the past few months because rates have been so high. I did see some new data come in this morning that I didn't have packaged and ready to go for you, but that was we did see kind of an increase in refi applications last week. So interesting, people are wanting to tap into this money and maybe as rates come down a little bit more, they're going to do so uh, more aggressively. So just kind of some interesting roundup for you. Here are some home price forecasts. So again, I showed the NAR uh, predictions for 2023 at the beginning of today's call and we see how wrong all of those were. Here are the home price forecasts from all of the main sources. We've got the Mortgage Makers Association on there. They're, they're predicting that we're going to have an increase of 4.1%. We've got CoreLogic on there at almost 3%. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac are coming in in the, in the twos. You see Goldman Sachs is, is predicting we're going to have appreciation. NAR is predicting we will. Uh, Redfin was at zero. So Redfin is essentially saying we're going to remain unchanged. But then look at... Uh, Morgan Stanley, they're coming out and they're saying that we're going to have a decrease in prices at 3%. So, you know, where we will end up, who knows? But I think it's always interesting to look at this and track this. And I'm excited because what I'm going to do next year is bring this back up and we're going to see how they tracked and we're going to actually start following that. Um, because, you know, I, I, I'm still always so fascinated at how quickly a year goes by. And when I looked at last year's call and had the predictions for 2023, I thought, oh my goodness, that just felt like yesterday. It went by so quick. Uh, so anyway, take this with a grain of salt. Where are we going to end up? Who knows? But I always find it interesting to see what the economists and experts are predicting for our market. And you'll see that a lot of them are pretty bullish on the housing market. 
I believe that it's going to be really interesting because, see, as rates start to come down, we see more buyers coming into the market. We're probably going to see more upward pressure on that price point. So interesting. We'll definitely be keeping track of that as it's happening throughout the year. All right. Here was something else pretty interesting, and I wanted to show and share this with you as well. There was an article from New York Times recently that says, what happens when Wall Street buys most of the homes on your block? And we know that in many parts of the country, not all parts of the country, but in many parts of the country, these institutional buyers are buying up single family homes and turning them into rentals. And in fact, Zillow came out with their predictions for next year's housing market. And one of the key trends that they predict is that we're going to see more of the single family housing stock be turned into rentals. Well, there was some legislation introduced last week, and it was the End Hedge Fund Control of American Homes Act. And this isn't the first piece of legislation of this kind. There is also another act, the Stop Wall Street Landlords Act, that was also introduced into Congress last year. And so this is now another initiative aimed at really curbing these hedge funds, institutional buyers, real estate investment trusts, private equity groups from buying up homes across the U.S. And I think that this is something to definitely keep an eye on. Will these bills make it who knows who knows if they'll even come out of committees but it's really interesting how legislators are kind of uh, they're catching on to this now the amount of homes that are institutionally owned is relatively low most of the single family housing uh, stock as rentals are owned by mom and pop landlords and we know that we dug into that just a few weeks ago and I had shared with you our who's selling their homes in 2024 guide and in that guide one of the sections was mom and pop landlords and they own the lion's share of these rentals but there's no doubt a trend and the trend is is that these hedge funds and private equity groups and real estate investment trusts are buying up more and more homes. In fact, I think the 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 prediction MetLife had come out and had a prediction that by 2030 these this group of buyers, this institutional group of buyers, would own about one in seven of the rentals across the U.S. And so no doubt that we could see a, a reshifting of the U.S. housing stock. And as we do, uh, the question is, is that good for, is it good for us? Is it good for home ownership? And, and I would say that, you know, just off the cuff, it, it, you know, no, it's, it's, it's not. Because what we know is that buyers aren't able to get in and buy those homes. And so because of that, uh, legislation is being introduced. This was a bill that was introduced out of Oregon. And you can go to Jeff Merkley's site. You can just Google this and Hedge Fund Control of American Homes Act, and it'll pull it right up. But here's what they're proposing. I thought this was pretty intense. So what they're proposing is a complete ban of hedge funds from owning single-family homes. And if they do own a chunk of these homes, it requires to s them to sell 10% of the total number of single-family homes that they currently own to families, that's a, that's, a, that's a asterisk there, not to other, they can't sell them to other corporate owners. They have to sell them to families over a 10-year period. Now, if they don't, it would subject them to a $50,000 per single family home per year tax penalty. So that's pretty intense. Um, and then, as you can see here, it just enforces a whole slew of other things, basically making it you know, not even make economical sense to go out there and buy and own these homes. So a pretty intense bill. Again, we got to be aware of it. Keep an eye on it. If you're in a market like Atlanta, where there are a ton of uh, corporate owners, you know, this could be some relief for your market if something like this gets passed. I think this is pretty intense. If you read through the Stop Wall Street Landlords Act, that is not quite as intense as this one. Uh, so 
something is likely going to happen, though. I mean, there's just so much legislation being introduced around this. Keep an eye on it. Keep aware of it. Uh, and also, as you can see here, you could be considered a institutional owner if you own more than, I believe, 10 homes. So, you know, keep that in mind as well. This could really squeeze out mom and pop landlords as well. So it could have unintended consequences. But definitely something for us to keep an eye on. And of course, I will keep you updated uh, of any developments that these bills have if they go to committee and, and that sort of thing. So let's kind of switch gears a little bit. I also wanted to show you some insights from this report. So the 2023 Home Buyer Insights report came out. Uh, this was a report from Bank of America, and it's got a ton of information in here. And I wanted to just show you some of the highlights because buyer sentiment is changing. And what what this report uncovered is what you could be feeling, and maybe buyers are kind of getting over that sticker shock. So they pulled buyers back in April, and back in April, 85% of buyers said that they were going to wait till rates. Came Came down or prices came down and they weren't going to make a purchase until one of the two happened. But what we see now is when they were repulled again in October, that sticker shock is wearing off and maybe market conditions are starting to become a reality for them. And now only 62% said that they were going to wait and hold off. And what we know has happened since then is rates have come down a little bit, purchase applications have gone up a little bit, pending sales have ticked up. And so we know that buyers are uh, actively pursuing homeownership at this time. So some other kind of nuggets from this report that I wanted to share with you is the motivations for moving. And this kind of aligns with the reports that we see come out from NAR and from Zillow and from Redfin. But what we know is that buyers are making a move because they want a more affordable place to live. We've seen the great reshuffling of America. We know that places that are more affordable are getting more buyer activity. Uh, if their dream home becomes available, 50% of buyers would move. 40% of buyers are moving for a job or relocation. 40% uh, of buyers want nicer amenities. So they want a nicer neighborhood, that sort of thing. 38% said they want a larger home. Uh, and you can kind of look at the other remaining ones there as well. But always good to know why people are moving. I believe that using these insights and this intel in your marketing can help position you above and beyond everybody else. And it's almost like you're speaking to what they're already thinking. And we know what they're thinking when we read these data sources. So we also see here that they're saying 60% of buyers want to move to different area because of the cost of living. You see the career and the job reasons as being number two, family and relationships being number three, uh, the affordability of the housing stock ranks right up there, safety concerns right up there, retirement right up there. So again, all of the things that we probably intuitively know by working with our buyers, but also great to see that uh, kind of what we're picking up on in our market is also what what's uh, happening as well. So here's something that, that I found was interesting. This is what buyers are willing to sacrifice. And they pulled out some interesting generational home buying preferences. And home buyers are most willing to give up a brand new home, being near family, then public transportation, and then historical charm. So they're willing to give thing, these things up in order to obtain home ownership, but there's some differences between the older generations and the younger generations. And the difference is, is the younger generations are less likely to give up more space, but they're more likely to compromise on location. And so that kind of, you know, makes a little bit of sense, you know, maybe the the first time home buyers or the younger buyers, maybe they want that bigger home for their family and they're willing to live more in that suburb area uh, than opposed to the baby boomers. And I also found this to be really fascinating. So what buyers say is that home ownership is the foundation for financial success for them. So it ranks fifth in the ways that respondents 
define success. So when they're talking about what does success look like, homeownership is right up there. I mean, number one, they said good physical and mental health. That is success. Number two, personal growth and development. That's success. Strong relationships with friends and family, work-life balance, and then owning a home. And so we know that buyers really attribute homeownership to that feeling of success in life, uh, which we know there's so much data around homeownership and stable communities and all of that, that it is so wonderful that we promote and protect it on a daily basis as realtors. And I just think that we're in this time, especially with all this negativity from the commission lawsuits, that sometimes that that gets lost. And so just stay committed to that goal of promoting and protecting homeownership. You are truly doing a worthy uh, service, not just to your clients, but to the community at large. And uh, here were some more um, around the success and financial success and homeownership is number one when it comes to financial success, uh, even above saving enough money for an emergency fund above successfully paying down debt and above being able to retire early. And so again, it just really helps people feel really good about life. Uh, Many homeowners consider buying a home to be one of their greatest personal achievements. So 63% of people said that buying a home was one of their greatest achievements. That's above raising a family. It's pretty, pretty crazy. Okay, so some good stuff here, a lot of nuggets that we're unpacking, and I hope that you can really take some of this data, extract it out, and share it with your marketplace. Selling my home on Google is trending up ever so slightly year over year. You can see that the rank of it was about 77, and a year ago we were at about 72, so it is a little bit higher. I want to show you something cool. I want to show you our Cash Plus redesign page that we've done here at Zudelio because I know this is going to help you get your cash offer and options in front of more people. And as I'm showing you this, I'm sure you're going to be thinking of other ways that you can use this in your business. Uh, What we know is that when you're going in for a listing appointment, even if even if you've already got the listing, even if you're just going to, you know, it was a come list me call and you're showing up, I would still highly recommend that you put your, put their address in Zudelio and that you get those instant cash offers ready for them and you show them. You take the listing and you say, oh, by the way, I already have offers for you to review. This is going to help you do a few things. I've talked about it on a couple calls ago. I I believe that you can use these cash offers as a hedge. You can set yourself apart from the competition. You can let them know that if their home doesn't sell for the price that they're wanting or in the time frame that they're wanting on the open market, you always have these cash offers and options to fall back upon. And so I wanted to show you what we've done to revise this page. Uh, You know, one of the challenges that we have here is taking this offer structure and making it simplified and really highlighting the value proposition of it. And you've probably seen some of my before and afters of the the repairs that can be done to the home after the seller moves out. And so because of that, we really wanted to highlight how this cash offer structure not only gives that homeowner all of the certainty and convenience of a cash offer, but If the home needs a refresh, a rehab, a renovation, we can use this offer structure to enhance the resale value of that home. And the beauty of this offer structure is they make all of that upside on the open market. So the buyer that buys this this home and facilitates these programs only charge a fee. They're not a margin-based buyer. And I like to make that distinction because if you sell your home to an investor, if you sell your home to Open Door, if you sell your home to OfferPad, if you sell your home to We Buy Ugly Houses, the game is they want to buy low so that they can resell high and then the buyer makes that margin. They make the, the whole spread. Well, with this cash offer structure, the seller pays a fee 
for the service. And that's it. And it's accomplished through a structured sale where a portion of their equity is held back as a reserve and it's distributed to them after the home sells on the open market, depending on the price that it sells for. And so what we've done is when now when you're in your offer, so I'm just going to go back to the dashboard here so you can see how I got there. When you're in the offers and you are on the cash plus offer, and why am I focusing on the cash plus offer? The reason why I'm focusing on it is because it's the offer that is being accepted the most throughout the U.S. across many markets. And it makes sense because it's kind of the market that we're in now, uh, you know, a year ago, it may have been the straight cash offers. 18 months ago, the sell now, move later was just crazy. And depending on the market, we do see the different offer types get more action. So right now, the cash plus offer is the number one offer. So when you go into the view offer details button, here's now what you're going to see. What you're going to see here is a quick timeline of what to expect with the cash plus offer. So it basically lets them know they can sell on their timetable. When they accept the cash plus offer, they can say goodbye to the showings and stress of selling their home on the open market. They get to pick their close date. It lets them know that the buyer is going to do a quick home inspection, right? So once that contract is signed, the buyer will go in and do a home inspection of the property. It's important to know that this is not a renegotiation of the contract. What this is, is verifying the condition. And then also during that phase, if repairs can be made to enhance the resale value, the buyer can propose them at that time. And sometimes it's in a combination with you, the agent, sharing with us that, hey, if this home had you know, new countertops, if we resurface the cabinets, and if we replace the flooring, it would sell for $30,000 more on the open market. And so sometimes it's a combination of those things, but just keep in mind that during that inspection process is when that happens. Of course, at the closing, the homeowner gets that first payout. And then after, we can maximize the return by making any repairs, updates, et cetera. Once those are done, then the home gets sold on the open market. Now, the neat thing that we've done here as well is if you have a seller where this option is enticing for them, then what you can do is you can use the, the actual, your actual Zudelio software to show them how it works. And so what we've done here is we've loaded up before and afters of other projects that the buyer has done so that you and the seller can peruse through this. You can click to see different scenes. So maybe you wanna see the bathroom, you can see that the buyer can go in and do complete remodels of bathrooms. Uh, you can see how they go in and, you know, they can make updates and renovations to the landscaping if needed. And then also we have a few of them here. So as you're kind of going through this, if you can go through and show them different examples of different properties. I mean, look at that one, just night and day difference, right? Like, could you imagine trying to sell that? I've sold houses like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's fun. That's for sure. Uh, interesting conversations. Uh, and so, yeah, you can go through and you can kind of show them some of the possibilities that are available to them if they're interested. Uh, and so one other thing to keep in mind is down at the bottom, all of the financial information is given so they can get an idea of how much profit increase that seller realized by utilizing this program. I, again, I, I just, I look at what you're able to bring to your marketplace and part of me is a little jealous that I didn't have this when I was selling real estate uh, because it's just such a game changer. But, you know, as you're kind of maybe sitting at the kitchen table, going through their options with them, you can bring this up, you can give this option to them. And the beautiful thing is, is if they want to test the open market first and they want to go that route and try it, they can. And if it doesn't work for them as they intended, they can always fall back on a cash plus offer, even with the repairs. In fact, I know that a few of these homes that I'm flipping through right now were on the open market before the, the agent brought them the Zudelio cash plus offer. And so keep that in mind, use it as a hedge, 
Um, and then there's a call to action button down here where they can view the frequently asked questions. There's also a breakdown button where they can click to see the breakdown. So what we've done here is just given them the financial breakdown, similar to the existing page, except we've kind of simplified this process a little bit. And how we've done that is by adding all of the frequently asked questions. And so as they're kind of perusing through this offer, they can come in here and they can, uh, you know, watch a video if they'd like. They can get, get questions answered like, what's the reserve? How's the reserve calculated? What's the program fee? How's the first payout calculated? So a lot of questions that they can come in here and peruse through. So I wanted to show you this. You are getting a very sneak peek of this. It is not yet out on your Zudelio platform, but it will be by next Monday. Okay, so this will be live December 18th. And as it goes live, we're gonna want you to really get out there and share this awesome program that you have exclusive access to that can truly help them not just have an easy home sale, but potentially make more money. And so I find that to be very compelling and I know your clients probably will as well. So I wanted to show you that. And then next, I'm going to jump into the GPT. But I got a couple questions that looks like. Let me see here. Tammy Jenkins, Kayla, are they, aren't they still paying for all the updating, not just up front? Yes, Tammy, great question. So the cost of the repairs does still fall on the seller. And so it would definitely need to be something that the seller agrees to. So for instance, if it, the home needs carpet, paint, maybe replacing the countertops, an itemized cost will be given to the seller. And if the seller chooses to have those repairs completed, then that amount will be withheld from the first closing. Lori, I like the breakdown. It makes it really easy for the client. Yes, awesome. We do too. So give us your feedback too. Once you have it and you're playing with it and you're presenting with it, uh, please let us know how we can improve this. One of the reasons we went to this uh, timeline type format and showed before and afters was actually because of one of you, Zudelio member, Rob. He's in New Mexico. I'm not sure if you're on today. If you are, hi, Rob. And Rob is just doing a great job with the cash plus in his market. He had shared with us a PDF document that he uses when he goes in and he explains the cash plus. And so what we did is, is we thought, well, my goodness, let's put this into the platform. And so that's kind of how that came up. Joe, how do you overcome the objection of the two payouts? Most people are very apprehensive to that. They want all their money up front. This is such a great question, Joe. And it doesn't work for everybody. I mean, primarily, the homeowner needs to have enough equity to clear their payoffs and most of the time have a little bit of extra money to go on to their next move. So the two payout structure doesn't work for everyone. We're really aware of that. Uh, and so what I would do is just discuss it open and honestly. If they're wanting a cash offer, oftentimes the two payout structure is beautiful because then they don't have to pay any margin on the sale of their home. And if you've been watching my calls for a bit, you'll see that oftentimes I will pop up open doors embedded margin. And what that means is, is the percent at which when open door buys and sells a home, that margin that they take on every property. And what you'll find is that sometimes that's as high as 18, 20%. And then when you add in their service fee, sometimes it's as high as 23, 25%. And what that means is that that open door is buying it 25% less than what they're selling it for. And so that's 25% that that seller would have lost had they, for instance, sold the open door. And so by explaining the two-part payout, what you're really doing is sharing with them that, look, here is a way you can have all the certainty all the convenience of a cash offer. You don't have to get your home ready to sell. You don't have to put your home on the market. You get to pick your own close date. And oftentimes that certainty and convenience is a motivator for a lot of people. Not for everybody. Most people, 
bring their home to the open market and they get all of that upside from the open market and they don't have to pay an extra program fee. And, and we get that. But the other beautiful thing is, is if the home needs updating, I think that this product is a no brainer. If the home needs updating, especially if that homeowner is equity rich and cash poor, which a lot of people are right now, if that's the case, then this offer structure allows them to benefit from that home being repaired and rehabbed. And the beauty is, A, they don't have to do it. They don't have to deal with contractors. They don't have to deal with the scheduling. And B, they get to move out. So if you've ever lived in a home during repairs and renovations, you know how disruptful that is to your life. And so when thinking through bringing a home to market that needs repairs and updates, this to me is such a game changer. So I would just share with them how it works. Here's another thing that you can do. I am going to show you uh, the GPT Cash Plus Home Advisor that I created with chat uh, and OpenAI. And you can use this tool to ask it what the benefits of this offer structure are. You can even give this tool to your seller and have them ask it questions. And it'll share the advantages and the disadvantages because there always are. And I know one of the things that we find or that we hold uh, very, very near and dear to our hearts here is transparency. One of the things that motivated us to start Zudelio was the fact that we were in the trenches, we were lead generating for homeowners with the cash offer hook, and when we would get that cash offer inquiry, we would go get those cash offers from all the different cash buyers. And it was always so surprising to us how maybe one would be different, one would be higher, the fees would change and fluctuate. And so we always wanted the seller to have that really transparent look at the marketplace and what they could get for their home without leaving too much money on the table. And so that's what motivated us to do what we do was to bring that transparency to the homeowner. So definitely look at all the advantages, look at all the disadvantages, because the reality is, is that sometimes what we hear is that the seller may see that first payout is what they're going to get. And they may see that second payout is maybe they'll get it. Maybe they won't. We heard we've been hearing that more often. We're also seeing situations where the homeowner, we've had a few recently where they came to, to the first closing, they came with a little bit of money out of pocket. And so you would just be really surprised at what they value. You'll know really quick when you show them this offer structure and it resonates with them or it doesn't. And the beauty is, is if it doesn't, you get the listing. So we consider that a win always. This is a conversation starter and it's a way for you to get more closings because you come to them with a really compelling value proposition of having these cash offers. All right. Stacia, yeah, she said I got my I got the contract signed so I will be doing my first Zudelio deal. That is so cool. So Stacia was on a couple weeks ago and shared with us how she had another agent come to her and say, hey, you know, you have these cash offers. And so you were able to team up with a different agent on their client, bring a cash offer to their client. You inserted yourself into a real estate transaction. I love it. It's so beautiful. I love it. Okay, Tammy. So does the inspection and the GC come out and give a breakdown before they have to move out? Yes, Tammy. So that all happens during the inspection period. You will receive that during the inspection period. Uh, again, these are repairs that the seller would have to agree to. Uh, sometimes there's a list and sometimes the seller only wants to do a few of those things. And that's always an option too. So it's not like a uh, take it all or leave it type scenario that can be worked out. Yes, uh, Stacia said, can you talk about who does the inspections? Yes, I sure can. So the buyer uses primarily one nationwide inspection company. It's called Inspectify. All right, so now I'm going to move on and show you the GPT, the Cash Plus Home Advisor GPT. All right, so switching screens here. Uh, now I'm in my chat, my OpenAI chat. All right, did you know that a few weeks ago, OpenAI 
amidst all of the drama of them, you know, kicking out their CEO and then rehiring him, they released a new feature that is insane. It is so cool. It is the ability for you to create your own GPTs. And what this allows you to do is create a GPT that is focused solely on whatever subject matter you want it to be. And so I created this Cash Plus program, Home Advisor GPT. And what this will do is if you come in here and you just, you would go to the, once you're in your open AI, you would go to explore and you can find them, or I'm going to give you a link to mine. Mine is not, it's not public. So I'm going to give you a link to this one so you can play around with it, test it out, see how it works. But the neat thing is, is I have preloaded all of the data, all of the information. I've given it, you know, all the ins and outs. I've given it a lot of documentation. And so now I can come in here and ask it questions and it's going to answer questions about the cash plus offer with a really high degree of accuracy. So it's going to blow you away. All right. So you'll, you're going to see down at the bottom that there are some questions that are already kind of the, the pre-printed questions. Tell me about the cash plus program fees. How are the agent commissions handled in a cash plus? What's the reserve in a cash plus offer? So any of these, if, if I wanted to, I could just quickly click on it. And then what it's going to do is it's going to tell me uh, that answer. So as you're going to see here, how are the agent commissions handled? Well, here we go. It's telling me in the cash plus program, agent commissions are handled as part of the combined seven and a half percent, which covers both agent commissions and resale closing costs. This fee is applied to the original purchase price and it distinguishes that if the property sells for more, then it's applied to that higher price. It also is going to delineate out when these commissions are paid. So on the first payout, when the buyer purchased the property from the seller, a commission of 2% is paid out. On the second sale, when the property is resold on the open market, an additional commission of 4.5% is paid out with 2.5% being offered to the buyer broker. Okay, so you can see how easy it was to find that answer. So let's ask it something else. Um, what are the, let's go, because Joe was asking about the payout. What are the disadvantages of the cash plus offer? And I spelled that wrong. It's AI, it should get it, but I'll fix it anyway. All right. So you can ask it, like, what are the disadvantages of this offer? And it's going to now share with you the disadvantages of this offer, which I think is a great question to ask it, right? So first, fees and costs. Uh, the program includes a program service fee of around 6%, right? The reserve holding. So it's pointing out that the seller's not going to get all of their money up front. The house has to resell. That's a question mark. It's pointing that out. Uh, there's potential for lower overall return. There's market risk. There's complexity. There's limited flexibility in choosing the agent. Um, well, the agent chooses you. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, okay, so now let's try it the other way. What are the advantages? So now it's going to go through and it's going to give me what the advantages uh, of that cash plus offer are. Certainty of a cash offer. Potential for market upside. Uh, flexibility and timing, avoidance of traditional sale hassles, expedited sale process, let's see, no immediate repair requests. Uh, it does also tell you, look at that, if repairs are needed, they can be negotiated during the cash plus offer process and are often taken care of by the buyer after the initial sale. So that's pretty cool. Professional marketing for resale, reduced financial risk, handling of maintenance and utilities post-sale, streamlined process. So this is essentially synthesizing all of the information that I've given it. And whenever you ask it a question, that is all being filtered out. Now what I'm going to do because to me, this is a game changer for us, right? Sheila, is this the paid version of GPT? It is, yes. So you do have to have plus version, yes. Okay, a question from Natalie. What happens if the home does not sell for the amount agreed and there is not enough reserve? Natalie, that is a wonderful question. So in the event the home doesn't sell for 
uh, that amount and the reserve is utilized. Anything past the reserve is the buyer's responsibility. So uh, just think of it like that's a hedge. If it goes past that amount, then the buyer absorbs any additional loss. Here's another question from Natalie. This is a great question, Natalie. What happens if the first payout to the seller does not cover the existing mortgage payoff in full? It won't work. So if it doesn't cover their initial mortgage payment or payoffs, then the offer structure usually won't work. As I mentioned, we have seen recently some uh, sellers come to the table with some money to make it happen because they know they have their reserve coming. But typically, typically if the payoffs are not covered, then this offer structure doesn't work, right? It just doesn't make sense for the seller. And we try and uncover that really early on in the process. In fact, if you go in and you accept any one of the cash offers, the first question essentially, other than I, I believe the first question is, is when, when do you want to move? But we also ask, what's your payoff? And then we also ask um, if there are any other liens or payoffs. So there's all sorts of things that can be attached, right, to that, uh, to that property. And so we want to make sure that it's covering all of those. And we do ask that up front, uh, in addition to pulling data sources that kind of give us an idea. Okay, Lori, why don't we change commissions to fees? So, Lori, that's a great question. A few, I'd say ab about a, I think it was six weeks ago, maybe it was two months ago, we did change it. We were calling it the resale fee. But what we found was is that that wasn't really transparent because the resale fee is the agent commissions and resale closing costs. So we renamed it to just exactly what it is, and that's the agent commissions and resale closing costs. And Smarty, this will be available next Monday. It's going live next Monday. And Natalie added in on the short sale. Uh, no, typically that won't work for the buyer. So you could always, I, I suppose you could always get a cash offer uh, from Zudelio and use that as your basis for getting that short sale approved. You could probably do that if you wanted to. Okay, so we had some anonymous, an, an anonymous attendee question. I'm going to burn through these because I want to show you how you can create your own GPT. It's so easy and so quick. You're going to just absolutely love this. Okay, what happens if the home does not sell for the amount agreed and there's not enough reserves? Oh, I think I just answered that. If that happens, then the buyer absorbs any additional loss. And I think that I answered that as well. So what happens if the first payout to the seller does not cover the existing mortgage payoff in full? Then... Typically, the offer wouldn't work, or again, we are seeing some scenarios where maybe that seller is coming in with a little bit of cash to make the deal work from the get-go. Uh, okay, so quickly, I want to show you how you can create your own GPT, and why do I find this, like, so stinking compelling? Uh, I'm going to, first, I'm going to put that link in the chat to our GPT. And that way, if you want to test it out, it's not perfect. I'm still training it. However, I love what I've got so far. So if you want to go check this out, I would love for you to do so. And I'm throwing this in the chat now. That there is the link to my Cash Plus Home Advisor GPT. So you can go and play around with it. Okay. What I know is that, a couple things I know. Well, first thing, I think my slides are out of order here. What I know is that, look at this, FISBOs typically sell for less money than, than if they were to have list, listed their home. And what I also know is that there is an increase in sellers using real estate agents, not a decrease. So more sellers use an agent. Uh, it goes up and up, even with technology. Uh, and what we know is, is when they do FISBO, they, they, they leave a lot of money on the table. 
But what I also know is that if you go and you do some deep dive into what people search on Google when it comes to selling their home, what you're going to find is, this is my answer, the public screenshot, and what you're going to find is is that people search out all the time, it's like top query, how to sell their house without a realtor, or can I sell my house without a realtor, or how can I sell my house on my own, or can I sell my house on my own? And what I know is people are obsessed with selling their home on their own, but then when it comes time to it to actually do it, they end up using a real estate professional. And so what if you could create your own chat GPT and it was a home selling advisor and it gave people all of the steps to sell their home without you. But then when it was time for them to go deeper into the process, it prompted to use you. And so that was just one of the ways I thought that it would be really cool to create a GPT. And I want to show you how easy it is to start creating a GPT. And this is just one of the use cases. You could ultimately go on to create whatever you wanted. But this is just one use case. So keep that one in mind. All right, so the first thing that you're going to do is from your chat GPT, so I'm just going to open it up like it would look if I just logged in. You're going to see this explore over here on the left panel, and you're going to click it. Once you click it, you're going to see this option for create a GPT, and you're going to click that. Now, what this is going to do is pull up. It just kicked me back here. Let's see. Oh, I have to be on four, potentially. Now let's try this again. Oh, it's going to make a liar out of me right now. Okay, so maybe OpenAI is having uh, a moment, which is not uncommon. I was actually on a Reddit thread the other day, and uh, there's a bunch of Redditors are, are accusing accusing the GPT of, of getting lazy on them. Let me try it one more time. So I really wanted to just go in here and do it with you so you could see it. And it's not opening. Maybe if I close a few of them. So sometimes it gets bogged down and overloaded. Mm, guys, all right. Well, it's making a liar out of me today, but I do have some screenshots to show you because what I know about OpenAI is sometimes they're just at capacity or it's down and it'll be back up momentarily. So definitely go check this out. At, on your own time and play around with it. So what will happen is you'll click that explore button. Once you click that explore button, you're going to click the create a GPT button. And then once you do that, it's going to pop open this screen. And this is the screen that it's not giving me right now. And this is where you're going to prompt it to be whatever it is you want it to be. So for instance, if I were in here and it were up, then what I would start typing in into that message is, you are a home advisor. You help homeowners go through the options of selling their home. And ask me any questions you need me to give you to be able to help homeowners go through the process of selling their home. And so I would take you down that journey. That's what I was hoping to do with you today. Um, Let's try it one more time. No, it's not pulling it up today. All right, it's making a liar out of me, but it does work. I did create the Cash Plus Home Advisor. Um, let me see if I can go in here and and show you this one. Okay, all right, so check it out. All right, so this is, this is what you're going to see. This is the Cash Plus Program Home Advisor. You're going to see here that I can come in here and I can tell it all sorts of different things. I have already done a lot of work on this one, so I'm not going to be giving it um, any more data at the moment. But you can also come in here under Configure, and you can change the name. You can change the description. Uh, you can add in custom instructions, and this is actually one area that I would recommend that you really uh, take a look at. There are some great YouTube videos on how to give it great um, custom instructions, and then you can give it conversation starters. So these little guys here that kind of live over here, you can name those. Uh, here's the other really cool thing. You can upload documentation. So I've uploaded, so in your Zudilio backend, you have this Cash Plus Explainer document. I've uploaded that. I've uploaded the Cash Plus addendum. I've uploaded the resale marketing plan. 
Uh, and so then it'll use all of that information in those um, as its guide. So when it's getting a when it's getting asked questions, it's going to go through all of that documentation and it's going to return the information that it's finding in those. So my thought to you and what I was going to show you today if we were creating a new one is upload your marketing plan. Upload your checklists of critical dates. Upload your purchase contract. Maybe upload all of the verbiage that you put out there on your website. Give it all of that information. And so when people go and they search on your GPT, they can get returned all of this awesome information and data about selling their home. And you can actually guide them through the process using your own GPT. So I think this is fascinating. I think it's the future. I think that if you look at what's happening with technological disruption, commission disruption, those of us that position ourselves with tools like this are going to remain supreme. We will do wonderful. I know that um, Smarty is on the call today. He's probably the most brilliant AI configurer I have met thus far. He's, he's just brilliant. Check out what, what he does, what he has to offer. But I wanted to show you that. Uh, let's see. I've got some more questions. Yes, Santi said, these are all presets in the GPT responses for Zoodelia members. Yes. So as I'm creating this, first and foremost, I was thinking of you. And then I'm also thinking of your client because I thought it would be a cool tool for both to peruse. And so what we are, our kind of goal number one is create the GPT, ask it questions, use it a lot, see what it's it's answering and returning. And then when we get it to a point where we're confident in the returns, then we're gonna implement this into Zoodelio, into the API. Uh, we're also implementing this into Blast. And so the neat thing is, is because of the data sets that we're loading into Blast, there's some really cool things that people can um, ask it about their neighborhood, about their home, you know, like how many of the homes in my neighborhood have pools? How many are two-story? Uh, you know, how much value add would an ADU be? So all sorts of cool things that we're pre-programming that for and working that into Blast. And then also working this in to almost help the seller go through their different options and see what's best for them based on, you know, their own personal situation and then the different uh you know, program. So for instance, if a seller wanted to be able to lease their house back until May, because that's when their kids are graduating high school, then the sell and stay could be a good option. And it could like put the sell and stay as an option uh, in front of them. So definitely still a ton of work to be done on the GPTs, but they're fascinating and they're so easy to create. I mean, it's just really, it's just really your time. It's just really sitting there and thinking through how people ask questions, giving it the information that it needs to intelligently answer those questions, and then trying it to see what sort of information it returns, and then kind of working backward from there. All right, so what is the cost for this version? So the plus version, I think it's like 20 bucks a month. It's not much at all. It's insanely inexpensive. I'm so bummed that chat wasn't working, but I'm glad I got to show you at least the screenshots. I had those queued up and ready to go. Guys, use this time between now and when things really start picking up to prepare your business for the future. There's a lot of exciting things happening. I really believe you can create something super epic with chat and creating your own GPT. I mean, think of all the use cases. Like, I think of like, I think, oh my goodness, like if I was out there recruiting agents right now, I would be creating a GPT to train them on our onboarding, our systems, our processes, working with sellers, working with buyers, all of the things that you do in real estate, you can take and create your own version of a GPT with that. And of course, the goal is always to scale you so that you can do what you do best. And that is really meeting with people and helping them make the biggest decisions of their lives. So thank you so much for being here with us today. And I appreciate you. 
I, I'm probably not going to be back with you until next year. So I won't be with you. Um, my next Monday call would be on Christmas, and I'm going to be with my family. So I hope that you have an amazing holiday season. Finish out this year strong, and I will see you next year. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.